Hello everyone, welcome to another talk with Andy and Randy. I'm Andy. And I'm Randy, and we're glad you're here with us today. And what a special day it is. Absolutely. Pentecost is a very special day for followers of Jesus because it is the day that the Holy Spirit was poured out on His people. If not for, Pen for Pentecost, we would be in the same boat as people who believed in God before Jesus came. They had the Spirit of God with them at times, but the Spirit of God did not indwell them, did not continually strengthen, comfort, encourage, guide, correct, and more like He does for us. Yeah, the roots of Pentecost go back to the Old Testament. Pentecost was one of three annual festival days for the Jewish people. It was the feast of the first harvest, when people gave thanks for God's provision, bringing fruitfulness from the earth. It was a time when God's people, the Jews, celebrated their special relationship with God, who was their protector and provider. Pentecost is still a time when God's people, believers in and followers of Jesus, celebrate the special relationship they have with God. Before his betrayal and death, Jesus said to his disciples, Very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. That's a bit of a strange thought. The disciples had been with Jesus for three years. They had heard his teaching, seen him feed multitudes, calm storms, walk on water, heal the sick, and raise the dead. I'm sure most of us would gladly trade places and would have considered it an honor to be with Jesus, to have seen and heard him in person. It's very true. Many Christians today wish Jesus would show up where they are and answer some questions or, or have a conversation with them or do some miracle to prove his existence, his power, his presence, or, or that he really is God like he claimed. But Jesus clearly states it's better for the disciples that he leaves them and goes back to heaven so that the Holy Spirit could be sent to them to indwell and empower them. I'm pretty sure that means it's better for us to have the Holy Spirit indwelling and empowering us than to have Jesus present with us. Well, while Jesus was on earth in human form, remember he existed prior to that in heaven as God the Son along with our Heavenly Father and the Holy Spirit, but when he was in human form on earth he was spatially limited. He couldn't be in Jerusalem and in Bethlehem and over in Nazareth all at the same time. He could be with one group of followers in one place at a time, then he had to take time to travel to see others elsewhere. But the Holy Spirit is able to be present with and in believers all across the world, all at the same time. So it might be better for you or I to have Jesus sitting in the room with us, but not if that meant that all other Christ followers around the world would have to live without the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. That makes a lot of sense. Andrew, I wanted to take a couple minutes to talk about who the Holy Spirit is and, and what we believe about Him. Okay, should we start with our confession of faith? I think that's a good place, yeah. Okay. Well, we believe in the only true God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and that these three are one, the Father and the Son, the Son and the Father, and the Holy Spirit, equal in essence or being with both. We believe that this triune God created the heavens and the earth and all that is in them, visible as well as invisible, and furthermore sustains, governs, protects, and supports the same. And we believe in the Holy Spirit, that He is equal in being with the Father and the Son and that he comforts the faithful and guides them into all truth. Randy, some of our viewers may question where we get that from, why we believe the Holy Spirit is one with God the Father and God the Son. That's a fair question. There are multiple scripture passages that suggest this. Let's consider a few. There's a story of Samson in the Old Testament. Would you read Judges 15, 14? Yeah, absolutely. Judges 15, 14. As he approached, Lahai, the Philistines, came toward him shouting, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, being Samson, in power. The ropes on his arms became like charred flax, and the bindings dropped from his hands. The strength that Samson had when the Spirit of the Lord would come upon him, it was pretty incredible. Yeah, amazing, actually. Humanly impossible to be that strong. There's no limit to the power available to us through the Holy Spirit. What we want to focus on, though, is the Spirit of the Lord who came upon Samson. The phrase in the Hebrew is the Spirit of Yahweh or Jehovah in the King James. It's not the Spirit of a human overlord, the Spirit of an angel or some lesser being. It's the Spirit of God Himself. And in Matthew 10, Jesus called his 12 disciples and he gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. 
In verse 19, we read that when they arrest you, do not worry about what to say or how to say it. At that time, you will be given what to say. For it will not be you speaking, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. That's another good one, Andrew. We don't need to be flustered when we're unexpectedly put in difficult situations. Say a quick prayer, probably a silent prayer in the moment, and believe that God is there with you and he'll guide you. He'll give you the things you need to say if you ask him and trust him to. And like the Samson passage, the text identifies who the Spirit is. It says the Spirit of your Father will be speaking through you. So the Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of the Lord or of Yahweh or God in the Samson story. And here Jesus calls him the Spirit of your Father, referring to God, our Heavenly Father. Yes, in Acts 16, we read of Paul and his companions wanted to go to the province of Asia. Verse 7 says, when they came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. We've talked a lot about developing a personal relationship with Jesus, learning to listen in prayer, and as we read God's Word, and, and the need to discern the inner voice and prompting of the Holy Spirit. The passage doesn't give us details on how, how this happened, but it is obvious that the Holy Spirit was guiding and directing them, communicating with them somehow. And he will guide and direct me and you and our viewers too, if we'll tune into his voice. It's interesting that the Holy Spirit is called something different in this passage. Yeah, he's called the Spirit of Jesus. A lot of Christ followers, they're a bit afraid or standoffish when it comes to the Holy Spirit, but they feel comfortable with Jesus being their friend and brother their constant companion. There's no need for you and I to be afraid of the Holy Spirit. He is the Spirit of our Father in Heaven who loves us desperately, as we read earlier, and the Spirit of Jesus as well. The care and compassion, the love and friendship we've come to accept and expect from Jesus are the characteristics of the Holy Spirit too. And Romans 8 9 backs that up. Paul writes, you are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. So the Spirit of Jesus, now the Spirit of Christ. I remember before I was ordained being interviewed about my theology and my beliefs about God, and one of the pastors on the panel asked me, who is the Holy Spirit? So I brought out my best, uh, you know, memorized pieces of theology. And I said, well, of course, the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. He's equal in essence or being with the Father and with Jesus. The pastor said, that's true, but don't miss that the Spirit is the Lord and the Lord is the Spirit. He pointed out what it says in 2 Corinthians 3, 17 and 18. It says, now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all who with unveiled faces reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed into His image with ever-increasing glory, or from one degree of glory to the next, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Also, in one of our Thursday night Zoom Bible studies, we looked at John 14, where, where Jesus talks about sending the Spirit, and also talks about He, Himself, and the Father coming to make their home with those of us who follow Him by faith and keep His commandments. So it's, so it's time for any followers of Jesus who have been holding back to open our minds and our hearts to the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Why would you want to limit His impact in your life? The more we open ourselves to the Holy Spirit, the more of His power and peace and more patience we'll have. And as we daily invite God's Spirit to fill us and continually surrender ourselves to the influence of the Spirit, we'll see growth not only in those things, but all the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And that comes from Galatians 5.22. It's not automatic though, is it? We, we have daily choices to make, and you alluded to that. We can choose to live for ourselves or for the Lord. We can choose to be selfish and petty, harsh and bitter, or throw off restraints and live wildly. Or we can choose to embrace and intentionally live out the characteristics represented by the fruit of the Spirit. And the growth of the fruit of the Spirit in us is dependent on us staying in step or living according to the leading and prompting of the Holy Spirit, moment by moment, as we go through our days. Last week, we heard testimonials from Mark Carmode and Jason Leader about the peace that they experienced when they asked Jesus to meet them, to forgive them, to make them children of God. They both spoke of an incredible sense of peace. The Holy Spirit showed up in a powerful way and touched their minds and hearts removing their sense of guilt or shame, their sin, and giving them that deep 
peace. And Mark also mentioned that all his life he had been searching for something to fill the emptiness he felt inside. He said that no person or possession or substance or experience had ever been able to fill that emptiness. But the day he gave his life to Jesus, accepting his offer of forgiveness and friendship, the Holy Spirit came and filled up that emptiness he had inside. If you haven't seen those testimonials, you might want to look up Why Jesus on our video page. Living life in step with God's Spirit isn't just something theoretical, it's real, dynamic, transformational. In fact, the passage you read in 2 Corinthians 3 talked about an ongoing transformation from one degree of glory to the next. The Spirit of God is changing us into the image and likeness of Jesus from one degree of glory to the next. Is He working on you? Yeah. <laughs> and it ends with which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll be back to talk more about the impact of life in and with the Holy Spirit after that. these next few items on our playlist.